Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here, and today is going to be a first. I'm going to learn some stuff by doing some stuff. Then I'm going to be able to share that with you, from which I'm sure I'll learn more stuff. More information about this in a sec, but let's just get a logic session up. Fancy. Got the microphone there. I've got two versions of this template uh, at the moment. The E2 version basically is bust so that you will be able to hear it's going into this computer here. Full disclosure, I'm using a palette gear controller. This is expression. This is modulation. And this is vibrato. Very important. I'm already hearing a lot of demos people are doing with BBC SO where they're not using vibrato. And a lot of the instruments sometimes will load, particularly if you're using these templates, with the vibrato all the way down so that's an important note first thing i'm going to do though is i'm going to load up a piano which you don't get with the bbc so yet but it's a free piano if you go to spitfireaudio.com forward slash labs it's the soft piano so if you don't have that piano you can just simply use the midi assign your own piano i'm probably going to use both of those so i'm just going to duplicate and this is actually a piano i played oh, over 10 years ago now the point i want to prove with this video is that anyone can orchestrate regardless of your abilities all it requires is a little bit of imagination and confidence. I think this is the one thing that cripples us all. So I think it's really fitting, let's uh, save this down, that I'm going to actually take a piano piece, an existing piano piece, in fact the only piano piece I know how to play that's by someone else, and I'm going to convert that into an orchestral piece. And that composer is Eric Satie. He was born Eric with a C, and in fact is not French, he's Scottish. I can hear the cries of mon dieu down in France all the way up here in Scotland as I speak. That's the piano part. I'm going to turn that right down. And as I say, it's just going to be a little guide. Next thing to do is to activate all these lovely lush reverbs that Jake and I have prepared in this template. It's one for each stack. And then if you have a look at the strings, when I get to them, you can see that we've pre-curated send amounts. The reverbs are just the host one that you get within Logic. So you can just import this session file straight into Logic at your end and you're not going to get any prompts. It'll sound exactly as you hear it here. Here you can see slightly differing amounts depending on articulation type. I think the thing that Eric's doing here is he's kind of imitating 
what a band can do. We only have two hands. So what he's doing is he's using the left hand to do two jobs, like of two players within a band. The bass. The accompaniment. And the melody. Singer, if you will. And for any of you who have been in a band, an orchestra is no different. It's just different people using different instruments to create different sounds. But unlike, you know, your rock band with your drums, guitar and keyboards, very few of the instruments within an orchestra can play more than one note at a time. So the trick with orchestration is to think of an orchestra as a set of voices. Indeed, the different sections are often referred to as choirs. And in so doing, when you're arranging for the different instruments, if you imagine them as a voice, as them playing a melody that combines with other instruments that are playing other melodic lines to form a harmony, I think you'll get much more successful orchestration. I think so often as keyboard players, we tend to think of chords as blocks and that's the adjustment we have to make is to think actually okay we're going to form these harmonies but primarily by creating a whole set of different voices first thing that i've learned from this piece is there's only three chords so it really is simple f minor c minor and b flat minor now i'm going to lay this down like a keyboard player would so playing all the voices simultaneously block chords. Uh, the problem is if you just pick one sound, like uh, violins, they have a range, which is just the, the G string, the bottom of the G string there. So I'm not gonna be able to... So what I'm gonna do is record the entire string section with exception to the basses uh, together. But this is gonna sound chunkier than I want it to because I'm basically, I'm not assigning a section to each voice, I've got the sections like the cellos playing both the bass and the accompaniment. So we'll then break it up into its individual voices afterwards. We're going to play it nice and soft. Okay, what I'm going to do is quantize that, but always with quantize, you need to adjust the strength so it's not hard quantize, otherwise it'll sound like a computer. I will also adjust these, there's the vagaries of my MIDI keyboard, these need to come down. And it's interesting because you'll see that really, for the most part, there are four voices. And this really goes back to the choral tradition of sopranos, altos, tenors, basses and four-part harmony which was kind of perfected by Bach many many years ago. Let's voice that up into its different voices. So what I'm going to do is just convert all of these aliases uh, into real copies and then simple rule of uh, voicing is the low instruments play the low notes, the high instruments play the high notes and try not to make them overlap. Again, if we adhere to some conventions of orchestration, they're not rules, the conventions, you will find that your music sounds more like the orchestral music that you've heard in the past. So starting with the cellos, I'm just going to simply take up all, all the high stuff out. There we go. And then violas, big violins, second violins, second top harmony, and the first violins. There we go. And if you listen to it back now, it'll have a gentler sound, more appropriate for the velocity I'm playing very quietly, and also uh, more representative of what those string numbers would sound like. And that's the difficulty of playing it all in simultaneously, is you're not really hearing what each voice is doing. So 
let's just take these up a notch. see the bits where it gets a bit too quiet. Awesome. Now we need to find our lead singer and I nominate the oboe. So I'm using expression to control the level of the instruments against the rest of the band and this to control the dynamic layers we pass through. So what I've done is reduce the expression so we really can hear the strings uh, compared to the oboe. Okay, occasionally we get dropouts on this palette gear. It's the one thing I, I do enjoy using the palette gear, but it just, it's a little problematic. Basically these are, you can take these apart and just sometimes I think the connections get lost, which is frustrating, um, but it is pretty. Okay, so we could theoretically go, keep on the, uh, the uh, oboe. What I'm instead going to do is I'm going to introduce uh, a clarinet. Just a little bit of post-production on that. One of these achacaturas, I believe they're called. The, just a bit on the close side. Yeah, that one there. Which is if I don't join them up. So that's it. That's orchestration. That's taking a composition and assigning different notes to different instruments whilst imagining that they're voices. But we can take it a lot further than that. I think I mentioned about, you know, something that the orchestra can do is not only provide these lovely tonal colours, so you've got the clarinet going, kind of I agree with you, oboe, but you can also layer instruments to create different textures. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring the rest of the, the kind of the end of the chorus, if you will, I'm going to bring more of the woodwinds together. So I'm going to reintroduce the oboes in unison with the clarinets, that means playing the same notes at the same time. And as I kind of showed in that example with the pizzicato, I don't think it sounds as good as if you actually play it in and balance it in yourself because all of these little micro uh, nuanced kind of shapings will make the whole thing sound like a bunch of separate players, not just a synth. Another little thing you'll notice is that off, off the end of the notes, I'm just beveling it off. Natural play, professional players tend to make the end of the notes. They go, dum, like that, dum. Everything kind of glides in and out. So we had another one of those little dropouts there. So that's, you know, we've layered up a unison. Now what I'm going to try and do is actually put another member of the woodwind family on top, which is the flute, which sounds particularly good up an octave. <laughs> One thing they will do, they are different kind of human beings, but they will tend to come off together because you'll have a conductor go, whatever it is, 
pretend to know what conductors do. That is a bit of layering, and that is kind of one section orchestrated, and we will return to it to make it a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more interesting. So the reason I picked the woodwinds as the lead voice for that section is because as I say, I believe there's a kind of haunting sensuality about the piece and therefore there's a eroticism about using woodwinds. And also if I was to arrange or orchestrate that top line in the strings, I don't think that line is particularly idiomatic of strings. So it's this next bit where I think that we can give the strings a go, if you will. So I'm going to power up the legatos. Just let it power up. So I'm just going to, for the second part, make them play more fuller with vibrato. And that feels too strong to me. On some legato instruments, you can control transition type. Here I'm making it switch to a glide or portamento style transition. And on that as well, great to hear that without the vibrato. So that's the top line in the strings. And I want a string accompaniment, but don't necessarily want to kind of go into mm, ja. Jat and jat. I really want to make this kind of a sensual moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just going to power up a bunch of longs. Just work out what I'm going to play. So what I've done is figured it out like a keyboard player would, uh, block chords, so for the next two instruments in the string band. But I'm going to play it in using legato to, again, just keep it working like a voice. And you'll probably see that I will change the part that I played in keyboard player mode, thinking of myself now as a single voice, not as, you know, ten fingers. Okay, now on to the violas again, which we'll is grab a legato. Wait for it to load up, Henson. Patience, patience. Now, the other thing with orchestration that this guy Bach did with four-part harmony was establish a convention of, of harmonies. The different voices should move in waves like that, which basically means the middle parts can get really boring, and uh, there's no exception here. So let's... The viola leader, thank you very much. Well, that sounds great. Viola's legato.
Now let's have a look at the cellos. Now if you remember, this kind of shape is what makes for good orchestration. So instead of just going plonk, plonk, I'm thinking of coming up with a kind of another melodic line that is in both the basses and the cellos. And it's a guy called Wagner, we don't like because he's a massive racist, but uh, he did write some bloody good music. These phrases he does with these very soft, low bass cello octaves that I think are gorgeous. So what I'm gonna do for ease of use is I'm actually gonna transpose the basses down. I prefer it, actually. Paul doesn't agree with me. I prefer it when they come loaded in, transposed. Um, they basically, what they do is they read the same line as the cello, but they play an octave lower and have a little eight underneath the stave. So if we load up cello long and legato and then lots of vibrato. Whoa. I really enjoy myself. And again, if in doubt, just stick something in that you can sing. Got to think of where we're going as well. We're going up to that B flat chord. So I think. I kind of give it too much in that first bit. Okay, I've nailed the first bit. way of again thinking about these things as individual voices is they all get their little kind of moments some creep out more than others which is very exciting to do okay so that's a nice bit there i don't have any woodwinds don't have any brass just because i want to not because i need to or should do i'm just going to have a go the brass playing the lead on the next bit and there's nothing nobler than the noble horn so i've got the horn and it's, well, I've got four of them. And, uh, majestic sound. Horns, they have kind of two states, what I call the chocolate stage, and then what I call the brassy stage. It goes from to a ee, um, and it's, it's kind of like a word, it's, it really kind of switches. So the emotion of the instrument very much changes when it goes into the ah mode. So I've got to just, just get it absolutely right. Too loud! It's like learning a new instrument. I want the brightness, I just don't want it as loud. So I'm just going to take the expression down a bit. Trumpets can traditionally, when joining the horns, tend to go up an octave. So just for the second part. been playing around with these trombones, the shorts are just so bitey. Wow. 
I think, kind of introing into the brass section so we know they're kind of coming in, so it doesn't sound like we're suddenly changing the record. their voices so we're getting the cellos to do the bass and the accompaniment and the violas just doing the top bit so because they don't feel quite on. Let's just bring them ahead of the beat. <laughs> Running out of headroom a little bit, a bit of distortion. I have a little think about how I'm going to do that. Maybe just, let's just pull back some of the expression. exactly equal but it will give to a more realistic sound if you want it super tight if you want it really kind of hybrid -y, just adjust the tightness there but I'm not gonna fiddle with that because I like it sounding natural okay and uh, let's get the old these I think another trick to make it really tight also is to um, is to copy it into the leaders as well okay so just gonna be a good boy and I think what I love about this library is the first and second sound so different? Oh, I was working on the shorts just there. I almost felt like I heard a bassoon, so it's inspired me. <laughs> amount of satiesque whimsy because he was kind of a media composer back in the day wrote music for kind of cabaret vaudeville and then when he kind of uh, was slightly more respected as a composer he used to write for the theater and some amazing ballet and i think by all accounts was was a very eccentric figure he had only eight of exactly the same coloured, done coloured suits, which are like a horsey brown coloured suit. And by all accounts, I think he was very kind of eminently beat upable because he used to have a, a an umbrella with him and the end of the umbrella was actually a hammer so he could fight off assailants. He was the kind of bloke people wanted to hit, which very much resonates with my experience at school. So I think a bit of Bassoony whimsy is is completely appropriate here. I don't want to kind of get snow blind. I just want to have a very first look at the first part, part A, if you will, after a save. And then I'm going to call it today 
I think it's really important to give yourself distance from these things, especially when you're, you know, you're climbing inside the orchestration, you're working out where these things, if they're crossing over and, and you know, what notes to assign where, and you're kind of flipping from keyboard player mode to vocalist mode and all of that kind of stuff. I think it's very difficult to get a subjective view. So what I'm going to do is knock it on the head then come back first thing tomorrow morning. I think the first thing I'll probably sort out is the headroom stuff's probably quite annoying for you, all of this distortion and stuff. Look at tidying it up probably first, doing a bit of housework there. And then whilst I'm doing that, I think that ideas, you know, those things when you're making music, different ideas kind of pop out. Um, uh, introducing some nuance and some, some t timbral, you know, textures to make it a 3D kind of... Uh, immersive experience and for that I think that we should certainly look at some percussion but I'm not going to get to that today what I am going to look at just initially is just the very first uh, bit of the track if you recall we actually came in on part B again going back to that this use of the sustain pedal I just want to create a drone so let me go to the longs here and go for flautando. Now, the reason I took a gap is uh, to go from Arco, which is to play with a bow, to Pitts, you need to give them time. And I'll need to check here. I've given enough time between Pitts Carter and going into bows there. Again, we're working with samples. And if we're recording on the day, we could retake so you could round them up. But if you observe these little conventions and understanding of the instruments, it'll suddenly... It feels and sounds like a piece of orchestral music you listen to on the radio. Seeing as we go oboe, clarinet, and then flute, oboe, clarinet, maybe it would make sense to start with either a flute or a piccolo. So there's those kind of three voices and they come in chorally at the end. Wondering, only probably, I'm probably being too tarty here. Fingering Henson. That's me done for the day. See you in a, well, in, for you in a flash. Morning. For me, quite a late start. Makes me feel um, a little bit uh, lazy. But not as lazy as Eric Satie, who was uh, the laziest musician within his conservatoire, as professors called him. And he was so lazy that in order to avoid, I think it was uh, national service with the military, he caught bronchitis on purpose. And for any of you who've had bronchitis, I had it recently, a couple of years ago, it's pretty horrible. But how you go about catching it on purpose 
God, you've got to not want to do your national service. Did he get someone to spit in his mouth? Anyway, talking of time, just keep an eye on this clock. Give you an idea of the passage of time uh, for me. You'll see the load-in times, which will be in real time. But what I'm only showing you is the last take. So there's me nancing around, making all sorts of mistakes. And also getting to know the BBC SO. I've only done one track before this with the BBC SO. As I've always maintained with sample libraries, they're like an instrument. And, you know, this is where I, I get kind of frustrated when people do this thing of uh, just taking one bit of MIDI from one library and transposing it, you know, just kind of copying it onto another and comparing the two. You have to work with the instruments and, you know, certainly with Spitfire Audio and a lot of other good sample libraries, we make sure that the personality of the player is in the instrument Instrument. So not every legato transition is going to be the same. You've got to react to it. Sometimes you've got to play ahead of the beat, sometimes behind. So I'm kind of learning on the fly. And this is what's been so fun about this is kind of learning, uh, getting my head around the library uh, uh, with you, which is fantastic. So first order of the day is to just see what um, a complete mess we're in. Um, and something I just thought about yesterday that I didn't do is um, I can see there, there's the um, uh, vibrato. So I just need to make sure that zero information is there. So let's have a listen to where we're at, whether yesterday's adventures were a worthy enterprise. notes um a few bits i want to look at straight away i mean it's all right it's good i'm happy uh, i like the uh, what's happening at the moment is the sections feel like very different bits so we're gonna go, gonna find our way in and out the end section just feels a bit kind of lumpy and clunky and it's uh, it's lost that um sensual nature um a little bit it's a little bit too jagged so I'll have a look at the kind of string shorts on that, um, introduce some woodwinds at the end. And then all in all, I think there could just be just a little bit more kind of sophisticated coloration. So the first thing I'm going to do is just look at the pizzicatos at the beginning, which to me are just simply too quiet and some, sometimes they're not sounding at all. So I'm just going to have a go. Uh, being a bit cheap here, but I'm just going to literally just have a go at just just turning those up a bit. So about 
I don't know, 60% of these achacaturas, which are the little flicks, the bulum ornaments, about 60% of them are working for me. I just want to go in. It's terribly boring, but this is this is what we do. This is orchestral programming. I'm just going to go in and just have a real kind of forensic look at what's going on with these, you know, these melody lines. Okay, remember we talked about yesterday, you've got to give them time to switch from the plucking position to the uh, using the bow arco so what i'm going to do is actually tacit that bit and i think that what's that that is going to do is is open up a window for me to kind of bring in um this uh, bit here these feel just a bit too be far behind I'm going to bring those way forward, uh, just compared to the melody. And I feel that should be more of the, 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 the spirit of the, the, the rhythm, so more of a passing note. Gentle. the snudge and then I'm going to bring in the much maligned piccolo. It's amazing, it's about, it's about that big and you only need one of them and they're impossible to turn down. They are just, they're hated not only by the whole of the orchestra, Piccolo players are usually flute players who double. The piccolo doubling is basically when you've got your main instrument, but you can kind of go to an alto flute or a, a piccolo. And they, they just, flute players hate playing them. <laughs> Stick to Eric Sarty's melody, Henson. this template I'm going to be making loads of changes to it um, and I, I always maintain that it's impossible to know how these things are going to work and until you use them in anger. Lots of things that I put in that I thought would be useful weren't and just th things like I, I like to kind of scrunch it up and these titles are just insanely long so I'm going to change that. <laughs> Violinists would never finish a note like that, so just got to tail that off. I'm going to do that with both expression and I'm playing very quietly anyway. But what I'm going to do is duplicate this legato, this piccolo, and I'm going to make it sound distant by using a different microphone position. We're currently using mix one on everything. Sorry, I hadn't mentioned that earlier. And um, I'm just going to try this. <laughs> Just 
It's a little bit too rubato there. You can instruct players within the orchestra to kind of ignore the conductor and just play rubato, you know, ad, ad lib. And then the conductor will just bring the strings out and the um, piccolo out together, I think. <laughs> Just made, need to make those flat handos just that little bit longer. Right, I want to bring some elegance in with some percussion. Uh, I want to also, I just think that we need to have this bit here. It needs to just start a bit earlier. I'm going to get some timpani, some chimes, make it feel a little bit, just give it a little bit of something. Soft hits. Amazing sound. Is that just the mix? Nice one, Jake. Sounds amazing. Oh. <laughs> get these velocities exactly where I want them. Felt good, a little bit hot there, and just a bit too gentle there. Let's get those where we need them. Okay, and I'm just gonna have a little bit of a jam with the harp. Don't have anything in my head yet. Take this first bit down in velocity a little bit, it's just interfering with the melody a little bit. I think it's maybe too many notes. Okay, I'm just going to have a little look at the bassoon. Oh, it's just such a beautiful instrument, I just think.
these um, trombones sound insanely good. I'm going to try the old legatos. So let's get, return to the lovely harp and celeste. introduce maybe just see if we can get a tuba in which would be fun come on farty it's a contrabass trombone that's not tuba at all okay but i might use it places where we can really enjoy the tr interaction of the trombones and the cellos add a bassoon to that and just maybe at the top as well a little bit more bassoon This all feels incredibly late now that we've got the rest of the instruments in, so I'm just going to bring the oboe forward, just find another couple of little holes for the bassoon, get the bassoon over the trombones there. Just There might be an excuse for a cymbal, possibly, somewhere, and, and I think then we're kind of done. something 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 little bit of magic at the end here that thing got to end the note nicely always make sure the notes end nicely Let's get all the winds in. expression down it's a little bit oboey pizzicatos are interfering with the tuba now now we need to either tacit the pizzicatos or just make them follow the tuba <laughs> let's make more of that uh get a bassoon on that <laughs> Let's 
still doing something a bit odd with the uh, cellos and violas. A little bit of timpani. Help that along a bit. choked symbol on this as well. Again, not just copying those across, they won't be together exactly, and that will make them sound like two players. Um, that, I mean, they're tight enough, but just it's not, they're not MIDI tight. Okay, okay, we're going to do a series of rals and rits and accelerandos and all of that kind of stuff. So, okay, what I'm going to do is take a very brief coffee break, bit of snow blindness uh, in effect at the moment. So uh, uh, I'll come back, have a final little nip and tuck and tidy, and then play it down. I'm basically acting on a on a on a deadline to deliver this actual video, so I could naturally carry on forever making it sound better and better and better. But I'm uh, a deadline junkie, and I have a deadline of today, and I would like to be done certainly before eleven o'clock today. Um, so I'm putting a kind of arbitrary deadline on myself to finish it. So here's my final chance to make this sound as good as I can, also. Oh, look at that lovely tempo map. Thank you. 
Okay. So some of those uh, tempo things I'm not massively a fan of, so it's, I'm going to address some of those. Uh, I want to look at the flute at the beginning. The uh, there's a answering phrase at 41 in the harp that da ba da dum it's is on the on and it should be on the off um and the strings come in too hard for the kind of the stringy bit the last timpani is too loud so i might just actually go backwards i felt it should just be slower at the end So I just think that that row should continue to very slow. One moment. All of this set dressing doesn't give me anywhere to put my pad down. Okay. Just going to remove the last timp. Minolaiki. Leave him wanting more. Okay, and that, that offbeat. <laughs> Strings in too hard on stringy section. Okay, the rail at 20 was not so good. I think it was too steep. 12 went too slow. And just last thing to do is to look at the flute. Right. I think we have come to the end. And how did it end for Eric Satie? Well, not very well. Turns out one of the reasons why he had to fight off assailants is he spent much of his life completely pissed. He would get up in the morning and walk into Paris. I think it was a 10 kilometre walk, stopping at bars along the way. By the time he got to Paris, he was always very pissed. So as a consequence, he died from cirrhosis of uh, the liver and he was a pain in the arse to the very end or so I've read. Whilst I was making this video, I also saw on Nitin Sawney, who's one of the best composers in the country, he's done a reimagination of this piece also, which I've linked below. I didn't copy you, Nitin, if you're watching, just total kind of serendipity. And I think that's an important part of Eric Satie's legacy. Not only did he influence composers of the time, like Debussy, who became very jealous of Satie's success later in, in his life, he's very much inspired composers and continues continues to this day. I don't think you get John Cage, I don't think you get Arvo Pett, I don't think you get Alexandra Despla without Eric Satie. So do check out Nitin's reimagination down below. And if you like this idea of reimaginations, Peter Gregson has also got an amazing album out, which I've linked below as well. Check it out. So something that I've done here is you've noticed I've managed to keep all of the faders absolutely flat in unity. This basically means that I can prepare a MIDI file that you can import into any DAW that you want, Cubase, Pro Tools, and then two Logic files, the one you see here plus a stripped out laptop friendly one. Particularly for Logic users, this is just simply, if you own BBC SO, you just simply open this file that's linked below or get it from the page, spitfireaudio.com forward slash the page, and just load it into your computer. And this is the whole point, you can just have a fiddle, it doesn't need to be a major project. But if any of you wanted a challenge, if you listen to the original structure of the piece, you can see that I've very much done an abridged version. So there's a whole heap of stuff missing. There's no music missing because, you know, Eric's lazy. But, you know, the structure is not full. So if anyone wanted a challenge of taking this reimagination, this arrangement, full length, that would be fascinating. But I'm even more interested to hear what you can do, maybe even just with the original piano MIDI to create an arrangement all of your own. I would really love your thoughts, comments, criticisms, feedback, suggestions in the comments down below. And please, if you are going to take this and do something with it, do share it with the community. Hashtag one orchestra. Thanks, as always. I mean, going on, I think it's only five hours of 4K footage I've got to process. So I can imagine this has been a long film. So well done you for sticking to the end. I guess the most important piece of feedback that you can give me is 
has this been useful? Is it too long, too short, detailed, not detailed enough? Do I need to speak more, speak less? Do you want to know more about composers? Please, as much feedback as you can, and I will take that into account for the next video I make. I've really, really enjoyed this, and this is something I'm going to make a regular thing simply for my own... You know, I know my own personal kind of... A lack of motivation will mean that I will never sit down at a piano and learn how to play Chopin. It's just not in me. It's not something I've ever been into doing since I was five. But taking music apart and putting it back together again in my own unique shape is something I've always really enjoyed doing. So I want to do more of these. I just need your guidance. Subscribe if you haven't done already. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up. And one of those for Scottish Eric. Pissed as always, but with a hammer at the end of his umbrella. Bring it.